we want to find out what their hands go and talk to them. But we didn't want to do to others what others had done to us. And when they came into our area and heard us, a crack routine and thing like that, they said, listen, slow down. That's enough. Many Gullah Geechee today cannot even speak our language because people who came in from the outside told us it was of no value and we ought to get rid of it. They never tried to do what is my favorite proverb that starts saying wisdom is the principal thing. So get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding. But I can't understand this brother here if I don't never communicate with this brother here. Who was talking about he might run and dip out this dope quick that while he put his hand <laughs> 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 You don't understand what's going down with the brother unless we communicate. You see what I'm saying? So, see, I, that's why I'm going through. He told me to be a fight. I told him it's your will be a fight. That's what you talking about. Right? Didn't I say that? All right, good, mama raised you right, you got me. I take on what money can. But you see, if we never dialogue, how can we understand? I can't understand Sherry's life if I never talk to Sherry. And about what you hear about Sherry, all right, from somebody else. And when you hear about Sherry from Sherry, and from Sherry's soul speaking to you even louder than her voice might be able to talk. But if I never get around Sherry, I never see Sherry out, I feel like whatever Sherry was doing is of no value, it don't matter. I just got here today and whatever I said, dude, that's what we're gonna start doing. How can I ever understand Sherry? How can I understand her journey, her people's journey, through these places and these spaces? I am now assigned, I am now on duty to do this one thing that's carry out this mission. Well, what about the mission God had for why those people were put on that coast in the first place? That wilderness wouldn't have been there had Gullah Geechee Hunters not kept it there all the years that we still existed on those islands without anybody else. He and Woods wrote a book called Black Majority about what is the Gullah Geechee Nation because really, truly, until the latter 1970s, we were the majority along that entire intercoastal world. It was not until destruction that came that many of you call development that started to displace our people from that coastline so that people could do this for <laughs> And we say way too five. <laughs> But then that was why the people are scream up for every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you try to go across there, then you, you don't have a residence pass. You can't come in. Excuse me? My people marry in there. I go out there on a facility. My grandmama, them, we give them things like that. I clean them all. No, you can't come in. You'll have to turn around right here and go back out. Excuse me? Who you is? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gone for this development. Excuse me, one more gift. You just get your yesterday. I've been here. I need for going on to my grandmama them crib in there down that road. I know we've got this new building here for. And this these stop sign, who you is? Next thing they call security, they'll call the police and have them escort you away, although for generations. You and your family have always gone there. And when you visited your grandma, your granddaddy, and all these people, you harvested some sweet grass on your way coming out. But auntie there, who tell you, Cal, I can't go down there, but I don't show you what forget. I need you to bring back a knife one look at the note right there, right, grab a thing on there. Plenty on the go there in a time for pull up. So go on there and pull that thing out. I don't show you how to do that. Go on there and take care of that. And that's somebody else, all the people. Go on your honor while you to pull that and it cut this your whole rush. And I nothing to hold up. And somehow, with all that we done do, and I make this your thing for keep growing. Make this your thing for keep protecting the coast. Make this your thing where the oyster bed is still dead or anything like that. Because after we nap from the oyster, we go and shovel the shell back over in the creek and all that kind of thing. We're going to do that thing all these years. All of a sudden, we can't go in there. Can't do it. 
Somehow we got hurt in the hand and we didn't help all this at all. Somehow God threw me up for nothing. But now y'all claim they think you're all right for cutting everything down and put concrete on top of me. That's supposed to help something? We ain't help nothing. That's why we call it destruction. Because we ain't seen nothing develop since it come, but we see plenty of things destroyed. Including the relationships people that had with the past. They can cut off in the past. How many do I know where you go in the future? They say, if Hunter ain't know where Hunter did from, Hunter ain't quite know where Hunter go on. They see, the only experience people can see to a graveyard now sometimes is half a bit of Jonah and one of the battle boat. They have them going up from the creek side. And even after they start going up from the creek side, another group of people come in with one of these big bunny shirts again. And so our food is y'all cracking one coming on the water now. We care what's getting trapped this evening. Where did we put on the land? You're back to the nerve. You say don't come across the border. Now we did the water. You got one body in the water? No, we didn't care water. Oh, great God. What on the We ain't got no game on the boat. We ain't a hunt nothing. We just going fishing. Yeah, but we govern the water too. Great God, y'all are gone. And then I said, how does y'all come out? We ain't got no boat in this shit thing. Where y'all come from? Look, you got to get on your boat. Let me see what you got. All right, for well, stop. So come on on the boat. You see this other thing in what's wet yet? So now, when people are going out half a while, half a can't go yonder for harvest for the land, can't go yonder for harvest for the creek, can't go, they start going on again. So now some of you chill out. Never know how to do none of this. But some of you are going to do a long time. But we don't watch all the bush and things grow up time again. We don't watch all the tree and things grow up. We don't watch all the food grass and things. And then when the news come into your forest fire, and burn up the same thing. You see, you see that now? You see that ID? You see the only thing that burn that the same place so that people run me off? You see that? Huh. That's all the people can see. Because see, we still don't understand. Why we can't do that? We're going to get all the time. And so they tell me, no, 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 no. We come for help because we, we work with the government or that was again. But we not like the people in the gated area. You got a gate? <laughs> Get all the same in the week. <laughs> y'all in a be we friend. Tall dog. And I can tell me, said, this y'all my said, I'm on your own business. I said, I'm on business. I try to read a book. I'm on business to the house every time it gets dark for reading books. Somebody to come in and bother in there. Come back, try to sit on the porch, try to read a book. You know how you got that swing at there? You have to sit in here, read a book. Somebody come by to blow up your home on the hill, they have a hill, everybody go in by. Then they leave her and the kind, and they have to get up, either leave children or something, or all of that, and the woman can't read it. The woman said, Great God, I just, I just, oh God, I still want to see up here since this morning. Uh, <laughs> okay, I know I want to. The woman gone on down to the creek show. Say, great, God, at least I'm young. They can hide underneath a tree or something. They ain't gonna buy it. Now they get there underneath the tree. They saw somebody buy to a rancher. They said, okay then. No, they ain't gonna buy it. I can do like a Jesus. I can wind up some water this shit. <laughs> See, I missed that day. Bring that anchor in there. And push that food out of his ears. He said, oh yeah. Ooh, this is a good thing now. Oh, pardon me. I'm gonna be comfortable down with people. Next thing I hear, I'm gonna hold up. He look up. It's your man that comes. That thing won't eat you. She said, Please, your Lord, please let this man duck me off ya. I ain't no. She said, Please. How you doing, ma'am? Fine, sir. I want to do it. Fine, ma'am. Um, look here. You got an awful lot of fish in the gear, ma'am. Yeah, in the boat, just like I did in the boat, I had a fish. I read my book. 
Well, look your ma'am, I need to come on board and thing like that. Because I might have to give you a ticket out. Let me see a fishing license. I need fishing license to read a book. <laughs> I read a book. But ma'am, you got all the right equipment in the book for fishing. You got all the right equipment. In. So you can't give a fishing license, I'll have to give you a fine, ma'am. I have to give you a ticket to give you a fine. Hold it! You gonna find me for sitting on board and read a book? You want to see Crocker in it? He said, ma'am, you don't have to, because I have to take you downtown and, and I'm gonna give you a fine because you got all the right equipment in the boat to fish it. And you need to show me your fishing license. She said, okay then, you can take me downtown. Yes, ma'am. I said, well, when we get downtown, I go find you for real. I go charge you with the ring. How I miss, I ain't touch you. How you gonna charge me with the ring? Because you got all the right equipment. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, this is the kind of drama, as much as we might laugh about it, it is literally going on, on the intercoastal waterway every day, to the point where my people no longer see any of the area that you all are mandated to work on as a refuge at all. because they see the destruction that has displaced so many families and so many communities and where people's businesses used to be all the seafood industry, where people's businesses were their sweetgrass basket stands, where people's businesses were being able to just even fry some fish real hot right there, so they put a mother in a spot and thing like that right there alongside the road and thing raise money for the church, you know? Up in L.E. Chillin, when they're chillin, say we have to go on a field trip and thing like that. People would have gathered together and sell some dinners and things like that. Somebody else who know how to make chicken, I'm not putting bloody down now, y'all say cook. But when it really know how to cook, and they had them people do all of that, and had a good old tater salad, had a cornbread and all that thing, see y'all ain't bring me no food in y'all. Uh, and so they do all that, and the community would come together and take it back, take it chillin. Take care of building, take care of everything we need when it be just we day. And now, so much that we don't get so vexed with everything, the people got back home. That's why so much of, as I said in the beginning, live up here now, in these hills. No longer what's called the low country, you see. Because they felt like they needed a way out. They needed a way to get somewhere else. Maybe they could forget what had been going on and why these gates now block them from where they used to go. But they never thought of doing what I do. See, I'm that person who know that our ancestors didn't go into blacksmiths. So if there's a gate, we know how to open it. <laughs> Even if I got to smell the iron, I get it open. I'm that person who opened the gate on a finish. When the man comes stepping, I step right to him. How you doing? <laughs> but you got the right thing on. I need to talk to you. <laughs> well, who are you? I'm Queen Quet. Who are you? Oh, I'm so, so who you work for? Oh, well, you know, we work with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Really? So did the fish and the wildlife tell y'all what y'all should be doing or should human beings tell you? <laughs> and then look at me. Who's the lady being? I mean, I said, really? Because y'all won't talk to us. And we've been here all this time. It'd be nice if we could talk to you. Well, you know what? We didn't know. Y'all didn't know that all these people who was right in front of your face could talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, I could understand if you said, I tried to talk to some of the folks and I didn't understand. I would understand that. But we're right in front of your face the whole time and it's like you never see us. You never know that we're right there. So I said, how is that possible that you could be hidden and playing for you at the title of one of my friends books? But that's what has happened, is we're there, but folks act like we're not. Sort of that Christopher Columbus complex, you know? <laughs> they come in and they discover a place even though people are there already. <laughs> but they somehow don't discover 
that the reason the place is in the condition it is is because the people that were living there all the time continue to do the things that their ancestors did there. They continue to do the things that the first peoples that were there, that the places are even named after, did. They hunt, they fish, they farm the land, they care for the trees, they care for the sweet grass, they underbrush the place. They wreck the place out because they're scared of snakes. They don't want no snake crawling right. They can't see them. All right? They never were into just clear cutting for the sake of doing it. They knew what trees you ought to keep and which ones you need to go and break that thing up and run that thing. What would it think like that? We got a crab ball to see. Uh, y'all like to sit y'all crack, crack. Right? All right? You got to watch it and crack them on the federal building. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that kind of thing. So here it is, that they said, well, wait a minute. Well, well your people, I mean, who, who are your people? OK, if I could crack my teeth like a dish, you would all stand and people up. Wait a minute, are you a Gullah? Yes. Oh, why? I never thought that. Why didn't you think it? Well, I, 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 what? Well, you didn't sound like that. I don't sound like that. And what else? Well, you know, uh, do you make the baskets? <laughs> no, all of us don't make the baskets. <laughs> In fact, my family quilts, they make boats, they cook, they do castness, they do all the other stuff. We don't make no basket. We got enough other things with it. All right? But why? Because all of us ain't dressed like this. When you meet us, you should only meet me dressed like this, really, if you come to my house and I'm in the yard and I'm shucking some oysters or I'm cleaning some fish or something like that. I'm about to bake something, some good old rock biscuit or something and I don't want stuff to get on my clothes. But they didn't say if I'm going to town that I would wear this outfit. Yeah. This is literally called a house dress. <laughs> and no, when I went to the White House, I didn't wear this. <laughs> I wore one a little better than that. <laughs> But yet and still, people have certain images they've painted in their own minds, not by their own fault either. Hence why their brother sat by that door, because that brother said, chase this chicken through, I fight it. I'm just playing. I don't know what that is. He's scared to leave now, y'all. I'll be there out of his office, how you gonna walk out? <laughs> but you know, here it is, these images we paint sometimes. We don't know where the paint supply comes from because we never stopped and asked the very people who we wanted to know about, who they are, why they do what they do, how did they even come to be where they are, and what is it we could do together. And so I always believe in divine order and divine timing. So when it was that my people in Harrison started saying to me in Georgia, Queen Quet, you know there's an issue we have. And we've had this issue for a long time now. They just kept saying with the government. Well, the government a big thing. What part of the government? <laughs> and they start saying that their land was actually a bird sanctuary. I said, well, how the land get to be a bird sanctuary? They said, well, you know, when the war came, which war? <laughs> they started talking about that for a minute. And they said, well, you know, the government came and they wanted the land because they needed it. And then after that, they couldn't use it, they said, to try to fly planes out of here. And they didn't quite work out. <coughs> so the next thing we knew, one day we came, and what was there? A game. And now we couldn't go fishing anymore. We couldn't go down to the water anymore. Where my mama, grand, my mama, mama house been, we couldn't get to that spot no more. And so with the house still in no, ain't no house, there ain't nothing left except here. We remember it because we were a little charm. Or we remember it because from the time we were born, our parents and our grandparents told us but the day they moved from down there and had to move up the road. And that's how come some of them live further inland and some left from here. Some living down in Jacksonville, some living up in Savannah and all of this. I said, that's so. I said, well, it's kind of interesting 
because I'd never heard of just having massive acres of a bird sanctuary before. So I started looking into this thing. And I said, oh, so it's actually part of U.S. Fish and Wildlife, but then U.S. Fish and Wildlife got a part of them called the National Wildlife Refuge. I said, it don't sound like y'all got much of refuge going on here, except for the birds. And they said, that's what we say. You think you can help us talk to them? I said, I'll see what I can do. And I start searching for who to talk to. And I figured it'd be somewhere here in hot land. <laughs> for a Southeast Regional Office. And I emailed one person, and I emailed, get called this number, and the person wasn't there, and I left a voicemail. And then I called back, and I asked, does that person have an assistant or anybody? And they said, well, there's another man, and his name is David Rikers. And I said, oh, is that right? I said, OK, and I immediately thought of the Vikings, and we talked about that, too. And I said, well, can you transfer me to his number? So they transferred me to his number. He wasn't here neither. I left him <laughs> And so then I called back and I got the emails. I think I looked online and got his email. I wrote to him and I explained who I was. And so sure enough, he contacted me and said, Queen Quinn, I'd love to talk with you about this. And so as he said, and he, he said 40 minutes. I can swear we've gone there longer than 40 minutes totally. But when he and I started speaking, we spoke about the issue with Harris Neck and we looked at the paperwork that they've already gone through. But then we started dealing with what is the real issue, that Gullah Geechee's exist beyond Harris Neck, that the National Wildlife Refuge System exists beyond Harris Neck, that it in fact has 12 different locations within the Gullah Geechee Nation. Well, right now then, I needed to know all of them. I had him, I heard him peeling back papers, pulling maps out, <laughs> pulling stuff, typing, clicking, I'm typing, clicking. And by the way, whoever is your webmaster, I'm a computer scientist, your website needs upgrading. <laughs> because I just checked it last night and you got comments on it. I'm about to say, it better not be her who's been vexing my nerve a little while ago. I had to tell leave me be. It better not be my sister. Yeah, yeah. She said, ain't me, ain't me. <laughs> but your website had have some problems right now, so if someone else wanted to go do what David and I had done last year, they might not be able to so easily do it. They might not be easy to get to the information that we got to in minutes to be able to see how we could now connect, how I could get this gate open and not just I step in and talk to the man or the woman with the little emblem on the shirt. But how can all my people stop coming in there? I'm like, I understand protected land. I have no issue with that. I am a person who has won conservation awards. I work on conservation. I understand that dynamic from the environmental standpoint. But do you folks in the environmental world understand anything from a cultural standpoint? Is it in your mission? Is it in your mandate? And I heard, well, not really. Really, that was the honest answer. Not really, meaning we can do it. There's nothing that says we can't, but there's nothing that demands that we do it. Right? Right. So here it is. I said, well, before I get there, you know, to Atlanta, Georgia, to the federal building and the like, I like to do a little bit of homework and examination so that I can ensure that you all are well aware that I can articulate in your language as well. And I understand the dynamics of what you're dealing with here, within this instance. All right, so I decided, let me check out what are these folks mandated to do. And it was interesting to me to find that Rachel Carson, who most of you probably know her name very well, but those who don't, because some of y'all didn't know Wacomoy, <laughs> uh, who was the science and chief editor for U.S. Fish and Wildlife from 1939 to 1952, said this, and it's on your website. Wherever you meet this sign, respect it. It means that the land behind the sun has been dedicated by the American people to preserving for themselves and their children as much of our native wildlife as can be retained along with our modern civilization. I say again, along with our modern civilization. Wild creatures like men, and I would put women there, that's me, <laughs> must have a place to live, right? And it went on later to say, refuges resist this trend by saving some areas from encroachment. 
Well, I know why you do your work where we are, as I said, because we're quite familiar with the approach. A lot of people would like to turn every stitch of coastal area into a hotel zone and put a Walmart nearby and have golfing nonstop and bars and parties and all of that. Well, Gullah Geechee don't do that. We build in a manner that planners call open space because we don't put gates and we build one house here and if we got enough acreage, we build another house far off and we leave a lot of land in between for fruit trees and for farming. The family compound is what it is. So I see all them sisters are sitting in front of me like, yes. <laughs> if we was in church, I would have done said, hey, I would have said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> And so I saw this as an interesting challenge that somebody seemed to have missed. The with our, our, our modern civilization. Our is not the one person. Rachel Carson didn't mean our meaning herself. She could have said mine. She meant more people. Civilization, meaning once human beings come in and start clearing out the way that God had already said it, and we start building our stuff and our ideas and our concepts, that's what most humans call civilization. We ain't gonna argue about how we each define civilization, because we know some of us would say it's been some very uncivilized things done in the name of civilization. But here it is. I said, well, something's going wrong. Because maybe I need to see what they mean there by refuge. Refuge is defined as a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. It also means something providing such shelter. Again, shelter from what? Shelter from danger or trouble. Or an institution providing safe accommodation for women who have suffered violence from a husband or a partner. Now, some men suffer violence from women too. I wouldn't have necessarily made this gender specific, but the dictionary I looked at did. Refuge. And always I see refuge as a place of protection. And as I sat in this room today, my grandfather's spirit, where I lived when the compound he left to us, came to me. He said, you know what to sing and you know what to say. And just there, I could hear, I know you have to run, you have to run, run, run. I know you have to run, you have to run, run, run. I know you have to run to the city of refuge. I know you have to run someday. That I found out, and I never got to meet my grandfather. He died way before any of my mother's children got to meet him. So did my mother's mother. So on that side of my family, I never met him any of my grandparents, but every day they are with me. And when he spoke to me today, I said, thank you, sir, because I was wondering what song went with what I'm here for. In City of Refuge, I had found out from a gentleman who's now 90-something, who's a deacon of our church, that he said, you know that was your granddaddy song. I said, you got to be kidding me. He said he was the one that always raised that song in the prayer's house. So you say you love that song. Now what do you love that song? Because that was your granddaddy's song. <laughs> so when I think of the city of refuge, I think of a place of refuge. I think of a place to run into, not run away from. But when I think of the national wildlife refuge system, I find that my people run from it because they don't think it is a place of safety for them. They don't think of it as a place of protection for them. Why don't they? Because your places are like here, it says, providing such shelter. Most of your places don't have buildings in them, unless they're ruins. So ain't no shelter to us if ain't no building in All right? So to most people of African descent in America, that's how I refer to it. I don't necessarily use African American. African descent in America, you talk about going out in the woods. They ain't listening. <laughs> they ain't listening for a few reasons. What we going in the woods for? <laughs> you ain't just telling us go out there in the woods. <laughs> what we going for? Okay, now if you say we going hunting, good, let me get my gun. <laughs> let me get the other gun. And let me get my ammo. And let me get my boots. And let me put on long clothes, and let me tuck this in here, and let me get a hat. They ain't trying to get no chiggers. 
Right? We ain't just one anymore. All right? And you say we going hunt, we going hunt. Now you tell me, I just want to see what's in there. Well, you gone. <laughs> Don't think that those same spirits of their ancestors won't walk with them and won't talk with them. 